If you remember we left off last time, I was getting, <coughs> excuse me, an air. And actually today, I don't know, allergies or something's going on. So I, I started off on fire this week, and I'm <laughs> sneezing now, and it's just, you know, just shoot me, as they say. Um, it, it is funny, because someone asked me yesterday how my day went. It's like, well, I haven't caught myself on fire yet today, so yeah, overall it's going pretty good, you know, in the grand scheme of things. Anyhow, um, if you remember last time, we left off where I was experiencing an error by putting validation controls on it. And uh, the, the fix is, is pretty simple. And the fix is required because something changed in the 4.5 framework. And it's kind of goofy. In my mind and in the mind of a lot of folks that I read discussing this on the web, um, this, this should be something that you shouldn't have to do. All right? Because if you think about it, like going backwards compatible, you know, if you enhance software to do something else, you shouldn't have to make any specific changes just to get the old functionality. If you want to get the new functionality, sure, you have to go in and maybe put in some parameters in your config file and all that. But as it turns out, to get the old functionality, you have to put in uh, a snippet of uh, code. So let me go in. And let me open this up and show you the piece of code that did it. And also talk a little bit about um, the troubleshooting of this. So I'm going to go in and open, I'll wait till it comes up on the screen to do this. Stuff. So like if you have folders inside of folders, it's possible if you open the wrong one that, that you'll get an error. So be sure you open the one, be sure you open the folder that contains the web config file. So I'll go and open this. And I'll run it to show you that the validation does indeed work. One thing I'm going to do since we're going to be dealing with this form a lot today, I'm going to set it as the start page as opposed to the default. Um, that'll just make my life easier. So I'll set a start page. Go and run this. So now if I do not put anything in the text box, or if I put a non-numeric value in the text box, it will, um, it, it'll, it'll work okay. So. If I put nothing in there and click the button, I get the error, which right now just says required field validator, but we, we should put a, an appropriate error message in here. Or if I put something in non-numeric, it tells me I must enter a number. If you remember last time when I did that, it, it blew up. All right. The fix for that is contained in the web config file. And I added this section to the web config file, which says, essentially, says, handle validation like you've always done. 
ASP.NET. All right. So this is simply saying this is saying just do validation the way you've always done. Don't use the, there. There's options of ways that you can handle validation under the new framework, and this is just saying well just do it the classic way, just do it the regular old-fashioned way. Um, so I added that line in there. How did I figure that out? Well, I didn't figure it out. Google figured it out for me. Right? Um, one thing to keep in mind is that oftentimes troubleshooting is as simple as copying this error message into Google and seeing what it has to say. And sure enough, as you read through these, it gives a description of the problem and, and tells you that. There's a couple reasons for doing that. First of all, you know, that's the exact there. As long as the error doesn't contain anything specific to your application, you're probably going to find it. Right off the bat, it will give you a feeling of comfort to know that there's other people in the world suffering the same problems as you are. All right? It's the old misery loves company. So you'll see that and you'll say, oh, I'm not the only one that has this. But oftentimes you will have, you, you know, you'll get to a solution pretty quick. Now I say this, again, you may be sitting there rolling your eyes and saying, of course that's what I'd do. But I have experienced students, and even relatively bright students, that it wasn't that obvious. That, that they didn't think, gee, I can just go and copy this whole error message in there and get precisely what I want. So, again, um, do keep in mind that, um, how do I want to say this? Um, sometimes the answers that people give on these forums aren't always right. All right? And, Sometimes they may uh, give a misleading answer, or sometimes they may give like a partial answer. Like, for example, most of the ones said something about adding a. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Most of them said something about adding a key for this. Well, you have to add it in the app settings section. Maybe they must assume that you know that. So sometimes you get part of an answer and not the whole answer. But at least, at the very least, it points in the right direction. I typically, when I'm doing this, um, will look at a couple of them. Because uh, very often, um, one answer may be speaking from a very narrow perspective. It may not necessarily be wrong, but maybe it's, it's speaking for a narrow perspective. So if you read a couple of them, you can kind of get a sense of what the problem is and uh, a, a better sense of what the, uh, what the solution is. Again, I try to mention this, and, you know, and you may already have developed these sort of problems, uh, problem solving or troubleshooting skills. <coughs> But troubleshooting skills, believe me, are an important part of, of the job because I can't, you know, we can't cover everything in class. And even on your own, reading everything, you know, chances are you're not going to be an expert and know every single aspect of the framework. The .NET framework is just, it's huge, all right? There's a lot of stuff in it. So while it might be great to know everything about the framework, just as good, or almost just as good, is being able to find what you need quickly. So sort of honing those skills. So I'm, I'm trying to, in the assignments, maybe make them a little more open-ended, maybe give you a suggestion without necessarily telling you the answer, and all those things so you develop the, the troubleshooting skills. Because it's just it's a skill like anything else. You just have to practice it. All right. So... Let's now rewind to where we were when this mess hole started, and let's talk a little bit more about these validation controls. So let's go to those validation controls. Are you going to put that on this website? Are you there? Okay. If you look here, we have two validators. 
Now you might say to yourself, what, do I really need two validators? And the answer is yes. For example, let me get rid of the required field validator. You might say, well, if it forces me to enter a number, of course I'm going to have to enter something into it. Not the case. If I only have a compare validator to validate the data type, and I run this, it will accept no entry. So the validator does not give me an error, all right, if I don't enter anything in. It does give me an error if I enter in garbage. But if I don't enter anything in, it doesn't give me an error. And you may think that's weird, but if you think about it, it kind of makes sense. Because the validations are sort of independent. Let's think if you had a form where you had an optional field for age where you could put the age in, but you didn't have to put the age in. Well, in that case, if they put nothing in, it's acceptable because it's an optional field. Yet, if they do put something in, you want to make sure that it is a valid age and not some garbage characters. All right? So, by making these validations, each just responsible for like one little thing, all right, it really makes it more flexible. And really, from what you saw last time, it's not that big of a deal to add a validator. All right. So let's go back and redo that because we had some problems with it last time. So let's start back at square one. If you remember, um, we had this little routine that simply squares a number. And of course, without any validation, it's going to blow up if we put in something that isn't a number we try to square a non-numeric field. So, we can put a number of different validation controls on here. All right? There's a series of them, and I like to go through them one at a time. They're under validation. There is a compare validator. A compare validator allows you to compare to do two different things. This is one thing where I kind of think they messed up, the developers of the .NET framework. Because the compare validator allows you to do a couple different things. It, it, would be, it would be better, in my opinion, to have separate validators for these different functions, but oh well, no big deal. We'll, we'll get past that. A compare validator allows you to First of all, compare two fields on your form. All right? Why would you want to compare two fields on your form? What's a classic case of having to compare two fields on your form? Making sure passwords match. Making sure passwords match, right? You know, you're creating a new account, enter in your password, enter in the confirmation password. Well, we're going to want to have validation to make sure that those two equal. Right? Otherwise, there's a problem. Can I even think of another case where you'd want to compare two fields? I was thinking maybe if you have some type of login system, you want to make sure that the person who's entering the information is the logged in person. That's a little bit different. That's a little bit different situation. Uh, this compare validator literally validates two different fields on the form. So. When you log in, you're not really comparing the user ID to the password. I was thinking if something might be hidden, you can um, it Yeah, but that's probably not a good strategy because if it's a hidden field, then you could view the source and, and the user could circumvent that. So, yeah, so you probably would take another approach for like logging in. So, does that mean that the fields have to be the same with the, if you're using the comparison? No, you can compare them. You could compare, one way you could compare is compare to see if they're equal. You could also make sure that they're not equal. You could make sure that the first one's greater than the second, the second one's greater than the first, and so on. So you have the option when you create a compare validator of It 
there's a there's a control to compare and a control to validate, but there is also oh, an operator. So I could compare that they're equal, I could compare that they're not equal, I could compare that one's greater than the other, greater than or equal, less than, less than or equal. When would I when when might I want to use like the less than or the greater than or equal? So measuring in a range, let's say. You need a positive number, so it's greater than zero. Well, that's not comparing to another element on the form, though. Okay. All right? So with this, this is comparing two elements on the form. But I guess what I'm thinking of is, is if I was searching for, uh, you know, out of, out of a, 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 a car lots website, and I was searching for used cars between $5,000 and $7,000, I'd want to make sure that the higher dollar amount was greater than the lower dollar amount, right? I wouldn't want to say, give me the list of cars between 7,000 and 5,000, right? Because nothing fits in that range, right? But I would want to say that, I'd want to make sure that the first was less than the second, all right? So that would be a case of doing that. So you can use a compare value to compare two different values on the form, all right? So that's an important thing to remember. Um, you can also use it, as we're using it here, as a data type check. So if it's a data type check, you are simply going to validate it uh, to make sure that the field is the particular data type. type. There we go. And in this case, it's a double. We have to specify, for all of these, we have to specify the control that you're validating. So for every control validate, or for every validator, you have to say, well, which control you're validating. Because we could potentially have a bunch of text box on the page. And we have to say, well, this validator goes with this text box. Uh, in the case if we were comparing to see if one was greater than the other, we'd also have the control to compare. So we'd have the validate control and the control to compare. Questions about this? Custom validator we'll leave off for a second. We'll, we'll skip that one for now. A range validator is where the value that you enter in has to be within a certain range. So, for example, let's say our, our square calculator here, let's say we want to make sure that we enter in a positive number. All right. So I could put a range validator here, and I could say the control to validate is text box 1. The minimum value is 0. The maximum value, I don't know, a million or something like that. I also have to put the data type in. Why is the data type necessary when we're validating a range? Yeah, if we give strings, it can do Repeat that, please. If we give uh, string, it can do the manipulation. Right. If, if we use a string, it's going to use a different manner to compare two things. Remember, when we're comparing strings, you're talking about like putting them in alphabetical order. So in other words, actually, if we're talking about a string, a string that contains the digit 2 is actually greater than a string that contains the, di the digits for 1 million. All right? Why? Well, because it compares it like you do with a phone book. It looks at the first character of each and says, are they the same or what is? And it looks as, well, 2 is greater than a 1, so 2 is greater than 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. So you have to get the, the data type right for it to, to, to truly compare right. So you have to say that it's a number. Then it will do not based on a string comparison, like a phone book kind of comparison where it looks at the characters in a line, but it will do a truly numeric comparison. All right. One thing I should be doing here, by the way, and I'm going to go back and, and retro uh, fit this one, is... I'm going to go and put in a better error message.
So I'll put in must be numeric for the compare validator. For the range validator, I'll say must be between 0 and 1 million. All right. This is the text of the error message that, that gets displayed in the case that there's an error. This is one of those things that please don't let my sloppiness in, in a lecture um, be, your, be your example, you know. Uh, sometimes if I'm in a hurry or if I'm illustrating a point, I may just drag a validator on there and not really go through the trouble of setting the text. But you ought to set the text. It should be complete. It should be a completed web page and it should be user friendly. Now, one thing that you run into is this. All right, right now we have these two validators on here. If I run this, and if I were to say put in a garbage, actually fires off both of those validators. So interestingly enough, I probably could get away with just the one validator. But if I put in a negative number, it gives me that. Notice how it pushed it over. I might want that error message to be like right over here. In which case, what I can do is set the option of display to be dynamic. And by setting it to be dynamic, it's sort of, if, if the, if the um, error doesn't occur, it doesn't take up any space. So if I go and run this and I put in a negative 100 for the value, click the button, that first error doesn't take up any space and so therefore this error appears right there. But they have to both be set dynamically, right? Strictly so speaking, probably, let's see, yeah, they probably would both need to be set dynamic because if I would think. All right, so we have a range validator. We have a regular expression validator. A regular expression validator is when you have a string that fits a certain format. There's a, there's a whole thing in computer science called regular expressions where you can see if a string fits a certain format. What are some strings that, that have a certain format? Phone, numbers, Phone number, email, email address, URLs, dates. 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 dates, but dates we can use, we can use a date type check on dates. So, so we could, we could, uh, we probably would be better off doing that. But those are all examples. It could even be something like if your organization's part numbers follow a certain format. Like, you know, some companies, a part number might be two alphabetical characters followed by four numbers. All right, that's, that's the rule of their uh, part number. So regular expressions sort of allow you to make sure that what's entered fits some sort of pattern. And there are some patterns that are already predefined for you. And then there are some patterns uh, that you can write your own and you can create your own regular expression if you have something like your company's part numbers fit a certain uh, scheme. So let's go in, let's put a box for email address. Let me put a text box. I'm going to enter my form as an unordered list.
I'm really doing is doing some formatting of the form. Now that I'm adding more stuff on it, I'm making it look more like a, a real form. text box for an email address. I can go in and I can put in there a regular field validator. Oh, I'm sorry, re uh, regular expression validator. And I can put in there the error message. Something like must Enter email. And control to validate will be that text box 2. Validation expression can click these three dots. And it gives me a list of sort of standard pre presets for regular expressions. And in this case, internet email. Aren't you glad you don't have to think of this? <laughs> All right. What this is saying is that you can have any number of letters, probably in numbers, then there has to be an at sign then there has to be more letters or numbers, then there has to be a dot, then there has to be more letters or numbers. Um, again, I, I can't say that I am an expert in regular expressions. I mean, if I look at one, I can sort of see what it's doing, but they're tricky, all right? And it, it is some skill to develop them, so it's nice that there's these presets uh, defined. So now if I go and do this, if I go and run this page, if I put in garbage for the email that isn't a valid email address, it will tell me I must enter email. But if I put in something that looks like a valid email address, it thinks that's okay. Don't the website, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Don't the websites validate whether it's a true email or not, though? No. Okay. Keep in mind where this validation is, is uh, keep in mind where this validation is occurring. This validation is occurring client side. So, in other words, the browser, you running your computer browser at home, you don't have the resources to go out and check to see if it's a valid email address uh, and all that. And even on the server side, that's something that you wouldn't want to really bother with. Keep in mind what you'd do if you did want to make sure it was a valid email address. What would you do if you did want to make sure it was a valid email address? Send a pin to it or something. Well, you'd, like if this was a registration for a site, you'd say, okay, you're kind of registered. Here's an email. Click on this link to finish your registration. So in that regard, that would be the way you would, quote, validate the email. Yes? So 